oh boy, I can't wait to watch the live-action remake of that South Park episode where the guy can't say planetarium. Planetarium. The Enterprise is making a milk run to a penal colony on Tantalus, managed by a Dr. Tristan Adams, a renowned criminal psychologist and a personal hero to Kirk. A large box is beamed back up to the ship, and a man emerges from inside, knocking out the officer on duty and stealing his jumpsuit. The colony calms the ship, alerting them of an escaped inmate, a Dr. Simon Van Gelder. A manhunt begins throughout the ship. Van Gelder bursts onto the bridge and knocks out a security guard. He begs Kirk for asylum and seems to physically struggle with his words. Kirk and Spock manage to knock him out. In sickbay, Van Gelder, with great effort, claims that his memories have been edited. After going through some files on Van Gelder, they find out that he is not an inmate, but Adam's associate. Bone suspects foul play due to the psychological duress Van Gelder seems to be under, so Kirk decides to inspect the penal colony personally. Jim enters the transporter room and, uh-oh, hot lady alert. Dr. Helen Noel, Captain. We've met? <whistles> Dr. Noel implies that there's been some kind of encounter between them in the past, and Kirk seems like he really doesn't want it brought up. But I'm sure they'll be completely professional and nothing will happen between, well, failed step one. Also, I love how amused Spock is at Kirk's embarrassment. Problem, Captain. Sassy bitch. Dr. Adams meets them down on the planet and takes them on a tour of the facility. He introduces them to a reformed prisoner named Lethe, who greets them with all the charm and warmth of a zombie. He then shows them an instrument called a neural neutralizer, a beam that supposedly relaxes patients. Adams claims the project is a failure and that it's not used often. He says that Van Gelder lost his mind experimenting on himself with it. At the same time, Van Gelder is having a fit in sickbay, crying out about the neural neutralizer as if it were a torture device, and saying that Kirk and Noel are in danger. After Adams leads them away, the therapist stationed at the neutralizer turns it on a patient and begins brainwashing him. It's a nice little setup and reveal, one of the best buildups in the show so far. Spock decides to telepathically meld with Van Gelder's mind to see what's really going on. He learns of the torture and conditioning Adams has inflicted on his patients. Meanwhile, Kirk and Noel decide to check out the neural neutralizer for themselves. Kirk undergoes the beam while Noel operates from the booth. To try and build off of whatever brief romantic encounter they had before, she puts a fake memory into his mind that the two of them did more that night than just chat. That's not creepy at all. Adams catches them in the act and takes the control brainwashing Kirk into believing that he's madly in love with Dr. Noel and orders him to discard his phaser and communicator. Kirk is able to fight the effect of the beam long enough to radio up to the Enterprise for help before passing out. Kirk wakes up later and tries to mack on that fly honey, but Noel at least has the decency to be like, you've been brainwashed, you can't consent. And she and Kirk come up with a plan to take down the force field around the planet so a rescue party can come for them. Noel diehards her way to the power supply while Kirk is dragged off for more torture. She manages to cut the power and Spock is able to beam down. With the beam shut off, Kirk is able to get away. The effect's still lingering, he finds Helen and... Spock, it's not what you think! They find Adams in the treatment room, the power having been turned on and the beam having killed him. The machine was not high enough to kill. But he was alone. Can you imagine the mind emptied by that thing, without even a tormentor for company? Well, that's good enough for me. Episode over. The name of the episode comes from Shakespeare's, my apologies to the theater majors in the audience, Macbeth. Art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat oppressive brain? Before murdering Duncan, the King of Scotland, Macbeth soliloquies about seeing a vision of a knife hovering before him, a manifestation of his guilt and inner torment about this vile act he's about to commit. It's this vision that haunts him and drives him into madness as he has more and more people murdered to ensure his claim to the throne. The name of the planet they're on is called Tantalus, which, if you're up on your Greek mythology, you know that Tantalus was damned by the gods for trying to feed them his child. It, it was a whole thing. His punishment was to stand in a pool of water under the branches of a fruit tree, but he was cursed to be unable to eat or drink anything for eternity. It's fitting, then, that a correctional facility would be on a planet named after him. But in terms of symbolism and names, I'm more interested in Lethe. Lethe is another name from Greek mythology, named for one of the rivers that runs through the underworld. The river Lethe is specifically the river of forgetfulness. If one was to bathe in or drink the waters of the river Lethe, they would lose their memory. Part of our cure, if you will, Captain, is to bury the past 
Why should a person go on living with unbearable memories? The river Lethe was also said to flow around the cave of the god Hypnos, from whose name we get the word hypnosis. Four years prior to the airing of Dagger of the Mind, the novel A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess was published. It was later adapted into a movie starring Malcolm McDowell. Just who the hell are you? He's James T. Kirk. Don't you read history? The book is about a vicious sociopath named Alex who is arrested for murder. In exchange for the rest of his sentence, he opts to undergo a procedure that discourages his violent tendencies. This is an example of operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is the method of teaching one's subject to associate certain behaviors with either reward or punishment. The best example is a doggy shock collar. Shock the dog when he barks or growls enough times, and eventually the dog will stop making sounds altogether to avoid punishment. This is what Adams claims the neural neutralizer is for, but we, the audience, know what it actually is, brainwashing. The neural neutralizer isn't simply a means of discouraging violent behavior. It essentially strips the patient of their identity altogether. He can reshape any mind he chooses. He used it to erase our memories. Put his own thoughts there. Our mind so blank, so open, that any thought he placed there became our thought. Morgan Woodward's performance as Van Gelder really took a toll on him. He called the role the most difficult thing he'd ever done, and apparently had to spend a significant amount of time away from family and friends after shooting. But apparently it wasn't enough to keep him from doing a second episode of Star Trek, The Omega Glory, where he played Captain Ronald Tracy. Dagger of the Mind is honestly one of the best episodes TOS has to offer. If I had to make a top 10 list, it would definitely be on it. Maybe that can be a future video. But one underlying theme that struck me while I watched this episode is prison reform. Kirk looks up to Adams initially because he had been an innovator in improving the state of correctional facilities by implementing methods of rehabilitation. Pop Culture Detective did a really great video about the Shawshank Redemption and the dehumanization of convicts in the American prison system. I'll put a link in the description below. But basically, Dagger of the Mind presents this idea that we need to focus on rehabilitating the incarcerated instead of being, quote, tough on crime, which was an incredibly revolutionary idea for the 1960s. Hell, it's a revolutionary idea now. It's such a subtle thing, but it's so poignant in the overall narrative of painting humanity's future as kinder, nobler, more hopeful. But we can only achieve that future with social reform. Star Trek wasn't meant to take place in a galaxy far, far away. It's us. It's our future. But only if we start making change in the present. That's goddamn right. <laughs>